So what are these other people doing here? They're obviously not riding to a hunt or a drag hunt. No. So what is it they're doing? Well, most hunts, well, if not all hunts, have followers, and, and they follow the hunt around the countryside, either on foot or using their vehicles, and then they park and get out and watch. So what and is it they like to see? It's a good question. I, I've never been able to get my head around them. They seem to want to be able to see the fox being hunted and then killed. If you ran that in my face... No, I'm not, I'm not rambling anything anyway. If anywhere, you could turn it off as well. Sorry. Fine. No, we're happy for any comments on what you're doing here today. Why would you want comments off us when you spoil it for us? We have to watch a drag now. Oh, I'm very sorry. What, what did we spoil? After 700 hours of bitter argument, Parliament passed the Hunting Act. Chasing and killing wild animals with dogs was banned. It's only a symbolic ban, at least that says something, you know, like all the other things that used to be acceptable, like cock fighting and dog fighting and badger baiting and slavery. The House of Commons finally dared to outlaw one of the last vestiges of aristocratic privilege. I sympathise with both sides. I can understand people who wanted to stop it. But it was a great tradition, it was a very colourful tradition. And to country people... 40,000 hunters signed a pledge to defy the law and the countryside went to war. Fox hunting was evolved by the, the land-owning class for, as an entertainment, and it's still maintained by the huge estates run by the members of the aristocracy who are enormously wealthy and still have a position of power within the establishment in this country. Kill on your own, your own Hilary Peters lives in the hunting lodge on the edge of the Duke of Beaufort's 50,000-acre estate. She invited us in for sherry. So this will always have been a hunting lodge? Yes, I think it was that. Built for exactly what it was used for today, you know, a huge meat and yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, a sweet sherry. Oh, sweet. Our request for an interview with the hunt had been turned down. Nevertheless, the hunt secretary joined us. He told me they hunted foxes that would not survive. Old and mangy foxes. It was a kindness and preferable to doing nothing. He said that the hunting field was like a football crowd, knowing nothing of what really goes on. The secretary again refused our request to put his views on camera. The Duke of Beaufort also refused a request for an interview, but did say all meats of our hounds welcome all comers. We've just... Yes. No, Fine, you know, yes. Absolutely none. So could you possibly leave? So turn off the machines. A pity, because we'd love to show the I'm full sure you spectacle. Would, but could you please leave? Certainly, yeah. Okay. Um, we have got to... Sorry we've got to leave, but we have been asked to leave by the one of the hunt officials. Um, so we are leaving as we've requested um, before the hunt takes place. So we have been refused filming the spectacle. Here she's coming. I am a bit shocked at, at people being kicked out, I must say. It's never happened before. Do you think it's because um, 
we did explain the nature of our film. Yes. So they, do you think... They, they think you're making an anti-hunting film, which you are. Yes. Um, fair enough, you know, mm. I think all sides should be heard. I really... Uh, do you want me to say what I feel about the band? Because, yes. I, you know, I love what goes on here. I love the estate, the whole tradition. It's the centre of social life here. Everything revolves around the hunt. And here, both sides have come together. And I think to repeal the ban is going to be a terrible shame because then you'll get the polarisation again and everybody will be against everyone else. And it's just lovely for hunters to be against the law. You know, it's, it's worked brilliantly. <laughs> so do you feel they've all obeyed the law? Of course not. No. no. Why should they? You know, it's, it's a hopeless law. No, nobody could possibly obey it. So... I, I'm not on the side of the law. So what... Um... I'm on the side of the estate. That is quite different. The hunt completely vanished into the estate and the crowd dispersed. We set off along the only public road to try and see what is going on. I noticed a car. I thought we were being followed. And maybe they feel we might see something. Every time we stop, they stop. And it does feel like a Russian spy movie, walking towards my watcher. And as I walk towards him, he's reversing. Clearly, they don't want us to talk to them. Anthropologist Hugh Brody says that Scruton's view of hunting is based on a deep history of privilege still visible today. The hunt is led by grand folk in fine coats and hats and followed by those lower in the social scale. The existence of hunters and hunting, along with farmers and farming, is a tribute to the longevity of old regal and aristocratic tastes and rights. They deny that hunting is cruel and they provide lots of reasons for saying that it isn't. But the overwhelming feeling is that it doesn't matter anyway. What happens to the animals doesn't really matter. The Countryside Alliance quotes, the anthropomorphic view that hunted animals flee in terror of their lives is to deny or be ignorant of a substantial body of scientific evidence. I never thought I'd be able to monitor because I'll actually see them hunting, you know. But then I knew I had to do it. I just had to do that because I was letting them down if I didn't do that. It was quite obvious that the video camera was going to be the end for hunting. It was when people could see what goes on that it would come to an end. Hunting's now illegal, or it's supposed to be illegal. So your job should have finished with the ban, but you're yeah. still going out watching them. The reality of the situation is we monitors are seeing exactly the same procedures as took place before fox hunting. There are still terrier men out on quad bikes. They still go into covers to find foxes. We monitors can only be at a tiny fraction of the hunts that are taking place across the country. And hunts go out how many times a week? Three, four... So each hunt will go out three or four times yes, a week? Yes, they will. Or throughout the season. In yeah. cubbing, it's usually five days a week. Five days a week doing cubbing. And, uh, you know, there's 300-odd hunts in the country. And, you know, this animal, this, this animal has a, a fully um, developed nervous system and uh, is capable of extreme anguish and pain. The hunters, to the hunters, it, it's treated as so much trash. In a room upstairs, Penny showed me more footage of the chaos and havoc caused by hunts. Jesus. 
And on it goes. Sporting dogs are still exempt from highway law, but they are supposed to be under control. Come here, sweetheart. One of them's just been hit. One of your hounds has just been hit. For God's sake, find out which one it is. One of your hounds you has just been hit by you? a car. Though hunters claim to love hounds with a passion, as with the fox, their welfare is secondary to the sport. Penny told me when the hounds slow down at around seven years old, or if they don't learn to hunt and kill foxes, they are shot. Hunters see themselves as the rightful custodians of the English countryside and its wildlife. Roger Scruton writes, the uniqueness of the English rural landscape is that it has been created and sustained by the conjoined efforts of generations of farmers and hunters. In England, we witness the coexistence of two visions of the landscape, that of the farmer, fiercely protecting his bounded patch, and that of the hunter, led from place to place by a quarry that recognizes neither boundaries nor laws, but only the ubiquitous distinction between safety and danger. Ooh. That wasn't your fault. Bloody hunter around. Though hunts maintain that they are operating within the law, most see the ban as a temporary imposition. Many say they need to be ready to return to hunting live quarry as soon as the law is overturned. In early August, we got a tip off. We are out for the first cubby meet of the season with the Heathrop hunt. This is when they go out to train their young hounds, hounds that have never hunted before. They take them out with one or two older hounds and basically train them to hunt what they would say is a trail. We believe they're hunting cubs and we come out here just to see what is going on and to see if we can get any evidence of illegal hunting. Go down there. Helen lives in the heart of hunting country. She started monitoring hunts after the ban. I have to do it because I can sit at home and be scared or I can come out here and do something about it. Yeah, the hounds will be in, in the woods looking for the, for the foxes. Helen told me what she That's thought was going on. So he's there to, if anything runs out, comes out of the woods, he will give signal, shout or sign. There's, I think there's one at the top of the hill, maybe. I can't see quite well enough. I can see, yes, there are two riders up there. Yeah. There is no proof that the Heathrop are cub hunting here, but the riders do seem to be following the traditional techniques of cub hunting. Hunting manuals show that the hounds do not naturally hunt and kill foxes. Every season, the new intake must be trained. The descriptions given by ex-huntsmen and other observers of these activities are often harrowing. As the cubs had been frightened away from their mother, they ran desperately out of the wood, only to be chased back into the very jaws of the hounds. It was simply a circle of death. The young family of fox cubs are allowed to grow in peace and quietness through the summer months. And then, in the early mornings of the month of August, the cubs are taken and flung to the madly excited hounds, who rend them limb from limb with a noise like the tearing of a piece of stiff calico. The thought that these things might be happening in front of me made me feel sick. We moved on, and whenever we stopped, the green 4x4 also stopped. Once again, we were under surveillance. Good morning, my name is Denise Ward. Um, I just wondered if you'd be willing to uh, explain to me what you are doing here today and what the hunt is doing today. We don't expect people out early in the morning with cameras asking questions like this. Why is that? Well, because it's very peculiar. It's a, it's a 
private thing to come hunting. Isn't Surely it? someone is willing to say publicly what the hunt is doing out yes. early in the morning. Early in the morning, we're coming out. This is the beginning of the season. We're hunting perfectly legally. We've got a bird of prey. We use the bird of prey to go hunting. We go hound exercising and we lay trails. In my experience, they avoid talking about the animals or if they do talk about them, they say it's a quick death and it's not cruel compared to other things. What they're talking about is the, is the pleasure that they're having or the fun that they're having. And presenting a picture in which the animals that they're chasing has no place at all except for one that's been put there through mythology of cunning Mr. Fox who might really enjoy being chased after all. The Countryside Alliance maintains that hunting uniquely reproducing the natural selection process by performing a vital search and dispatch function of the weak, the sick and the injured is the most humane form of population management. Morning. Um, yeah, good to see Professor Stephen Harris. Stephen Harris? Yes, yes. he's expecting us. Very nice to meet you. I've been interested in foxes all my life. I got fascinated by them as a child. I spent 40 years of my life studying foxes and their economic impacts and also a great deal of time going out with hunters to see what's involved. So I guess quite a lot of my time nowadays is spent looking at potential court cases and being sent videos and DVDs to look at uh, in relation to potential offences under the hunting act. Um, I just wondered if you'd be willing to I showed Professor Harris our footage from the Heathrop. We've got the bird of prey, we use the bird of prey to go hunting, we go hind exercising and we lay trails. If there were trail hunting, the one thing you wouldn't be doing is surrounding a wood with riders to stop something coming out of it, because of course if you've laid a trail, you want the dogs to follow it. One of several loopholes in the Hunting Act allows any number of dogs to flush out any wild animal to a bird of prey. In a legal opinion, Anthony Scrivener, QC, said, with the possible exception of golden eagles, birds of prey do not hunt foxes. But since the ban, around 30 hunts have purchased birds of prey, such as eagle owls. I saw no sign of birds of prey, or any indication that the Heathrop was on a hound exercise ride. Early in the season, the scent doesn't hold very much. You can't go for your long runs, but you surround a wood with riders and people to stop any foxes bolting, and the hounds are then put in, and the idea is they chase the, the foxes around in the wood, and they kill some. It's one way of helping the packs learn to hunt together, and particularly helping the younger hounds learn how to hunt and also start killing foxes. You don't want the foxes to bolt from the wood, so you surround the wood with riders. It's exactly what they were doing there. The fox hunters claim that what they're doing is a service to the countryside and that it's a, a natural way of controlling a fox population. Numbers haven't changed much in over half a century. So hunts aren't having an impact on fox numbers. The numbers they kill are a very small proportion of the total. If you want to think what the biggest cause of mortality are, it's probably the British roads. So no, hunts play no role in controlling fox numbers. The Countryside Alliance also claims that hunting is an economic solution because it is free at the point of delivery. It costs the farmer and taxpayer nothing. It's incredibly expensive to uh, run a hunt. I estimated many years ago it cost about £8,000 to kill a fox in those days, and that was 15, 20 years ago. I have no idea what the cost of killing a fox with a pack of hounds is today. But to suggest it's an economically beneficial activity for the farming community is very hard to equate with the facts. The CA uses the Veterinary Association for Wildlife Management to back up its science. It claims its 550 supporters, less than 4% of vets in the UK, form a collective authority that must be second to none in the debate on hunting. They say... The kill is almost instantaneous, made possible by the considerable power-weight ratio and height advantage of the hound over three of the four quarry species. Well, that's just another load of twaddle from the, that veterinary association. Uh, all you have to do is look at how dogs kill. 
and dogs kill by tearing their prey apart. Sometimes you can see just one lead hound catches up with it, and that point is quite slow. Very often the hound backs off when the fox tries to bite it, and it might take two or three hounds to get up to it, and they start pulling and ragging it until they eventually get a killing blowing. Basically, they kill it like they would any other prey. They bite it all over the body, and it might be quite a protracted process. In January 2009, ex-hunter Catherine from Reynoldston Gower wrote, I have ridden behind the hunt. The majority of times I never got a glimpse of the kill. But the first time I did, it changed my stance and lifestyle forever. I too was led to believe the fox died from a nip to the neck, until I saw with my own eyes a pregnant vixen being brutally torn apart by the majority of the pack while the red coats watched. I have found that hunting foxes is not necessary, and it seems that it must be disguised to make it acceptable. They'll probably claim that they are either flushing to a bird of prey, or they'll say, we're following a trail, someone's been out this morning, laid a trail, and that's what we're training the dogs to do, to follow the trail. The Vale of White Horse Hunt's website states that since the ban, they meet primarily to exercise hounds, coupled with a fox-scented trail. Does the masters know you're here? Um, not as far as I know. There's the master there. Good morning. You... Uh, am I talking to? Yeah, I'm Mark Hill. I'm chairman of the hunt. This is How do you do? He's morning. The Good morning. How do you do? Um, this We're... is private property. Uh, public footpath, I think. Yes, I know that. Um, but, I mean, is there anything that we can help you with? Yes, you yes, by all means. I've been told there's a hunt meet here this morning, so we've come to observe this. So if you would um, be happy to tell me or what you're doing here today, I'd be very... Well, we're we're, we're um, going about our private business. I mean, if you'd taken the trouble to telephone before you came... Yes, uh, yeah. ..to say what you wanted to do... Yes. Uh, I mean, the master is again following Countryside Alliance guidelines. Keep your points concise and sentences short. Do not be led into arguments or debates. Call for advice before agreeing to interview. I mean, I don't, do you know anything about fox hunting or drag well, hunting? Or... I'm trying to find out, so yes, perhaps well, I mean, you could if, tell if me. If you were trying to find out, it might have been more pertinent for you to have contacted me perhaps yesterday or the day before, and I could have shown you what we were going to do. But now I'm on a horse going about my private business on private land. So what would you be doing this morning? Well, just laying trails. I could get no further. Shortly afterwards, the rider set off with a piece of rag on a whip. The monitors say this is just for the benefit of the camera. If he were laying a trail, um, I suppose he might be starting from an agreed point further on. Um, but he seems to be standing at the end of the drive down there, as far as I can see. Ex-Huntmaster Churchward is clear what makes fox hunting special. The thrill of fox hunting is the ride over unknown country, taking fences, hedges and brooks in your stride in an effort to keep well up with the hounds and be in at the kill. Otis Ferry, master of the South Shropshire hunt, is less eloquent but equally clear about trail hunting. Trail hunting is like having sex with a condom. It's not the real thing. Here again, we are told that the hunt is legal. Hunters are instructed not to engage in debate. All the hunting websites state that they are acting within the law. But the monitors are still going out every week, and they are not welcome. Right, hounds are in. Saw them go into that pit there. Judy, so what's, what's going on here then? Well, I, the, the hunts have just taken the hounds, the, the huntsman has just taken the hounds down that slight slope there into the dip where there's Along a the cob, where there's yeah. a cover there. Yes, it came down the hedge line, took them into the cover, and then the mounted field followed up shortly 
and we've gone down into the dip. So what are these other people doing here? They're obviously not riding to a hunt or a drag hunt. No. So what is it they're doing? Well, most hunts, well, if not all hunts, have followers, and, and they follow the hunt around the countryside, either on foot or using their vehicles, and then they park and get out and watch. So what and is it they like to see? It's a good question. I, I've never been able to get my head around them. They seem to want to be able to see the fox being hunted and then killed. So when I've seen a kill take place, they will start whooping and cheering and things like that. They, they want to see the sport being carried out. It's part of their fun, it's their day out. They'll stand around all day waiting in the hope of seeing the hounds chasing a fox and then killing it. Oh, my God. You, you feel the wickedness quite palpably sometimes, you know, the, the, um, the evil. It is. To want to chase to exhaustion a beautiful wild creature for some sort of perverse sport, perverse entertainment. How, how can anybody derive pleasure from, from it? It's, it's, well, I don't know. I haven't heard anything to go in there and at right. all. Just know that they've gone down yeah. into that dip. I did see the, yeah. the hunts. I assume it's the huntsman with the red coat. Yes. Too far away to identify. Well, it's usually the huntsman with... that wears a red coat. You're very good upon it, are you? <laughs> Sorry, did you, what, did you... If you ram that in my face... No, I'm not, I'm not ramming anything anyway. If you could turn but... it off as well. Sorry. Fine. No, we're happy for any comments on what you're doing here today. Why would you want comments off this when you spoil it for us? We have to watch a drag now. Oh, I'm very sorry. What, what did we spoil? Many Hunt supporters were invited to give their views. All refused, although some did show an interest in the camera. Oi, am I not putting that in my face? Or I'll stuff it up your ass, else. At the moment, we're all standing by the road with hunt supporters watching hunt riders in the distance with the sound of hounds within a woodland. You've got fucking good hearing, eh? Because I can't hear them. <laughs> you put that in my face and I'll knock you out. You hear me? Fair enough. Hey? I'll tell you once and I won't tell you again. Yeah, go on, video it. I don't give a shit, but if he sticks that in my face again, I'll knock him out. Could we um, find out why this person is saying these things to me? Because you keep sticking that thing in my face. Savvy? Understand the Queen's English, do we? Or was it cold in the ground this morning? Let me know when you uh, need to call the police. Call them. Call the police. It's very scary sometimes because they'll harass and intimidate us as much as they possibly can to try and stop us gathering the evidence of their hunting. Excuse me. You're just being dangerous with your horse. No, now, do not right. do it. Excuse me. You're not going anywhere. Why am I? Why do you think? Why are you preventing me from moving? Because I don't want you to move. Please, Please take move. your horse away from my car. I will smash your car because I am entitled to. Turn that camera off, you fucking old whore. Many of us have been assaulted often. Fucking knock you out. We'll say you're stalking. Oi! Yeah. You're a cunt, you are. You're the couple most obscene, ugly bitches that could ever. And if I could catch you away from that camera, I'd kick your teeth in. I'll warn you now, all of you. Yeah. You go out in them fields, you'll get assholes. They're desperate for you not to get everything on film, and there'll be quad bikes driving up to you, revving, revving their engines fast. Away, you thinking, okay. There'll be horses galloping towards you. 
and all the time you're trying to get the evidence on film and hold your camera and keep yourself together. But <laughs> your heart is going fast and, and it's, it is a very difficult job. Hello, Judy. In January 2008, Judy and Penny were monitoring the Heathrop hunt from their cars. Now they're coming back. Now they're on cry. I've got them in view. They're coming down to... Watch Shackleton now. They're on cry. They're coming your way, I think. just attacked Penny's car. They're now trying to cover up. They've just been chasing a fox. Oh, no! Oh, no! Look at this! I saw them! There's a kill! There's a kill! There's a kill! There's a kill up here! Get up here! There's a kill! Oh, my God! There's a kill! They've killed! Get up here! Get up here! I've been threatened! Get up here! They've killed immediately to my right! Go down to Penny. I'm down, him. I'm down, him. They're just killed by Penny. Can you stop videoing me? I haven't given you permission. Oh, there's loads of people. Are you OK? <laughs> oh, Penny. They're just so low to me, the most vile people on the planet. You horrible, horrible people. <laughs> Penny told me she had seen the fox cowering before the hounds fell on it. The monitors had recorded a kill. The Heathrop hunt was charged with illegal hunting. This and three other charges against them were later dropped after a court ruling which said that the onus was now on the prosecution to prove the defendant was not covered by an exemption under the act. A minority pastime. A dirty little secret known all over the world. Well, One thing for sure, it's not made out of good Please times. Shut your fucking mouth, yeah? You'll see him coming. All red coats, high hopes, big battle ways to kill folks. Scared folks is running. Fifteen had his old mask up. What are we going to do? The wood in the undergrowth. Maybe somebody didn't do that last time. This time I don't give a fuck. The charge when we went to trial had been dropped from murder down to gross negligent manslaughter. And I knew that the only defence that we were going to trial with was what I'd said all along. I was fully aware that this man was there to summon others to the airfield and cause me harm. The next thing I knew, I got thumped in the face from the front by one of the men. And another man from the another man from the right hand side of me hit me again. Um, then they hit my other friend that was with me. Ignorant, stupid old woman. Flipping camera away. One thing for sure, this pain divides the heart of us. So say your prayers. This army ain't for turning. There's no languishing. 
They just ignore me. I'm on my own. I'm a woman. They're all men, nearly all men. They just think they can do what they want. He was riding by, and without warning, he just turned his horse into me. What is that? I got a woman, you don't love them, do you? Oh. Oh. Say we're doing something illegal, like harassing them or something. And uh, they, they, they believe the hunt rather than they believe us. Right. I'm going to take the cans, yes. put them in a bag, take them to the police station. Yes. You or your colleagues here can come and collect them Thanks later on. Right. OK? And the reason for... The reason for that is because I am worried about you uh, upsetting a lawful activity. <laughs> We've seen it. Why are you laughing at it's not lawful. We've seen it. it's an illegal activity. We've seen it.